Hey everyone, welcome to Aragon Haven, your Aragon Hotspot. My name's Aaron, and today I am going to be field testing the Umarex Gauntlet 25 caliber PCP air rifle. We are starting right now. Hey everyone, welcome to Aragon Haven, your Aragon Hotspot. My name's Aaron, and today I am going to be field testing the Umarex Gauntlet 25 caliber PCP air rifle. So, you know, very, very thankful that we got a um, day we could get out here and do this. It's probably about 50 degrees today, um, no snow or nothing. It is January 16th at the time of the recording. I always like my field tests to be bright and sunny. So if you guys are new here, while you're here, please consider subscribing for more air gun content. Um, a few disclaimers, as always, before I get started, this gun is being shot in a safe and controlled environment. Um, I will be doing this field test from around 20 yards away this time due to what is a little beggar. If you guys do want to happen to see 40 yards later on, let me know down in the comments and I can always do that too. Um, for the purpose of this video, we will be using the H&N Field Target Trophies. These are 6.35 millimeter, 25 caliber. Um, they are 20.06 grains, so kind of a lighter weight 25 pellet, but that's what I've been using and that's what I have this gun zeroed for, so we're going to go ahead and check that out. This video will be a little different today as I will be going inside to show you guys how to fill the tank, and then we will come back out here and I'll show you guys how to load the magazine and your single shot tray so yeah with all that out of the way let's go ahead and get this gun filled up here stay tuned all right everyone so i'm going to show you here how to hook up your fill hose here for me it's this moisture filter with a quick connect adapter to your gun so down here you're going to see you got this quick connect right here you might want to zoom in there a little bit and then see that there see that right there so we're going to go ahead and we're going to hook this up. I'm going to show you how to do that. So if you want to zoom back out. All right. So you're also going to have to take this off of that quick connect. You have to just pull it off there. I just did it for now. Um, I showed you guys how to kind of do that in the tabletop. So a couple tips here before we get started. I like to put my um, turret caps on there. Or not my turret caps. My lens covers on my scope so that I don't, you know, accidentally touch the anywhere in the glass or get any smudges on it. So um, you can kind of see I got this black ammo box here and you might wonder what I'm doing with that I'll show you so for this one it's going to kind of need leaned up so you can look continually monitor the pressure gauge for me so this is what I do we're going to lean your gun lean the gun something like that up to there now what you're going to want to do I'm going to move that compressor back you're going to stick this on here you might can you see this real good just give us the motion if you can okay you're going to take this pull it back Slide it on there, sometimes this can take a second. Okay, we're on there. So, um, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna kinda stabilize the gun. Not the best way to do it. If you had a gun sled, that would be a lot better. But, for me, I don't have nothing like that. So, we're gonna go ahead and get this started. You can see how to run this compressor in the complete review of this, but enough of that, let's hit it. All right, everyone, before we get started here, this is spliced in, because during the original take of this, I couldn't see the gauge because I was shining my flashlight on it and it was glaring and wouldn't, you know, be caught in the camera. I couldn't get it on the camera and I wanted to show you guys that perspective of it being filled. So with that out of the way, let's roll the machine. Let's hit it. All right, everyone, so you can see there's air going into the gun. We're going to let that get right about to 3,000 there. Then we will shut it down. So we will keep speeding up, um, obviously, as we're going here. We are getting right about the 3,000 here, so when we reach that 3,000 mark, we will shut it off. 
the compressor and I will show you bleeding your fill source. Or bleeding the air from your gun to your fill source. Alright, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bleed all that air off because your hose can whip out and cause injury and you know you don't want any of that so I just figured I would share that with you but most of us probably know to bleed the air but if you are new to this stuff it's just a good refresh it's a quick refresher um, to make sure you always bleed out your air let it completely bleed out okay and what you're gonna do you will go ahead and disconnect the moisture filter once all that air has been degassed tighten up your degas tighten up your degas screw Lay your gun down, take the little black cap, back over the quick connect, you're ready to go. Um, let your machine cool to below 30 degrees Celsius. Now that we have our cylinder full, let's go ahead and get the magazine loaded up and we'll be right back with that. Alright everyone, so now I'm going to show you how to load your 8 round rotary magazine. So what you're going to do, there's a little arrow there, you're going to bring it around back like that until it locks in place and you can just hold it. Now, for you origin owners out there, any of you that own a gauntlet, you'll probably know already how to do this, but always a good refresher is nice. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this right here, put this over your finger, put your finger over the bottom, insert your first pellet. Now you can go ahead and move your hand. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna start inserting a pellet, like I'm showing you here. You're going to just keep turning it, putting pellets in. Magazine's loaded. Now, now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to load the single shot tray in the next clip. Since I'm not going to be using the single shot tray in the video, I'll kind of show you here how to load that in there. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull your bolt back on your gun, and you're going to slide this in. So I suppose I could show you very quickly here. So go ahead and look at the bolt opening. We're going to take it off safe, pull our bolt back. I'm not going to load the ammo into the gun. What you're going to do is you're going to insert it with 25 facing to the left. Just like that till it clicks. And then what you're going to do is you're going to insert your single pellet in the breech. Like that with the head facing first. And then you can go ahead and push the bolt in there and close it and shoot. So there's how to load your single shot tray. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to load the magazine into the gun in the next clip. Stay tuned. So now I'm going to show you how to load your 8 shot magazine into the gun. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your magazine, make sure it's completely closed up, however many rounds you desire is in there, max being eight. You're going to go ahead and you're going to put it this way. You're going to pull your bolt back, and you're going to stick your magazine in like this, as I'm showing you. Push your bolt forward, now you have a round chambered in there. So let's go ahead and look at the field test now. Now we're going to go ahead and do the field test. We're going to shoot eight rounds of H&N field trophies out there, so let's get at it. It is a little blurry, fades in and out. I apologize for that. I don't know why my camera always does that. Let's shoot. All right. The birds start flying away. Nice shot. Let's see if we can stack that one now. Another one a little high. Another one in the center. Or close to the center, I think it's in there this time. Can't tell where that one went. A little high. Everyone in there, they are, they are all, they are all in the first circle, so that's good. None of them are leaving that first circle um, and going into the second, so they're either in the center or they're in that first circle. So that's pretty good. We got one more round. Let's see where we can put it at. All right, pressure went down a little bit. That shot went a little bit left. So. We are officially out of ammo in that magazine, so let's go ahead, grab that target, and look at it. All right, everyone, now for the analysis of all these results. 
this is not a very bad group at all um, with the H&N Field trophies. So very, very decent group right here. Then those last three up there, I might have changed my point of impact. But they're still grouped pretty nice at 20 yards with the H&N Field trophies. So eventually at some, you know, some point in time, I will eventually try, you know, something like a JSB or, you know, something maybe a pellet that's a little more expensive, you know, that kind of groups a lot better. Um, you know, I might have moved on a couple of the shots or whatever. But still, if you're like me and you're going to be plinking with this thing mostly, you know, knocking some bottles and cans down, jugs, whatever, you know, this accuracy is not going to be a problem. Um, and those pellets still work very well at 40 yards. Someday we will have to try a group on those as well at 40 yards, one of these days when it gets nicer out. But yeah, really, really satisfied with that group. This is usually what I live by. If we can get all the shots in the bullseye, or we can get them within the first ring here, then we're doing pretty good. So I think we're all right with this group, and you know I'm pretty satisfied with it. So, um, you know, like some people say about the trigger, for me, the trigger is very, very good. But, you know, I'm mostly plinking with mine, like I said. So maybe some hunting someday, but not very much. But I can, you know, I'm sure it's safe to say this is a very decent group with these exact pellets. So we got probably maybe about four right there. And I would say four right there. If you guys do want to see a different pellet on the channel eventually, maybe a h and or not an h and maybe a, yeah, h and maybe an h and Crow Magnum or a, you know, JSB Exact or something like that. In the future, we could possibly do that on here. You know, just because I feel that these are a good plinking pellet but maybe not the best um, for maybe other you know purposes. But for me, these groups are very good for me. Some of you, you might want them all you know, really, really tight. But for me, I'm pretty satisfied with it. So let's go ahead and get this video wrapped up here. Sad as it is to say, we are officially at the end of today's video. So if you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like on the video. I really appreciate that. Um, do want to go over these results again. These are not the absolute worst groups we've seen on this channel so far. Maybe not the best with these exact pellets, um, which are the H&N Field Target Trophies. Now, a lot of other people say the same thing that, from what I was reading, that the Gauntlet really don't like them. But I think if you're going to be, you know, like me, I'm mostly going to be doing a lot of plinking with mine. This pellet is going to be a great choice as it is, as it is cheaper, only being 822 on Amazon, which I'm going to probably end up getting somewhere else on Amazon because sometimes they have bent skirts. But... Yeah, if you guys are new here, while you're here, please consider subscribing for more Aragon content. Um, I do not have the next upload date off the top of my head, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that on the screen for you right now. It will probably be sometime in January. If you guys do want to see the full tabletop review on the Umarx Gauntlet, that'll be in the description below, as well as the complete review for my Viva 4500 electric airgun compressor. And I haven't said this in a while, but... Right about now, shortly after now, there should be some videos popping up on the screen that, you know, feel free to check any one of those out. One of those will be the tabletop, so you guys can go see if that's something for you. Um, a couple closing thoughts here is I do want to say this is an awesome gun for an, such an awesome price point. I got mine for $227 on sale, but, you know, they have it regularly, $339 on there, and it's, it's an awesome gun regardless of the price. Um, nice $25 to kind of get into the $25 world. So you see a lot of 25s end up being, you know, four, five, six, seven hundred. And, you know, a lot of us like myself, you know, can't always afford to put that much money out into an air gun. But, you know, I'm glad I was able to get something like that and put that on there. Uh, if you guys are interested in the optic that I've put on there, that will be linked in the description below as well, which is the Vortex Copperhead 3 through 9 by 40 Really, really a good scope for that gun. Really, really well suited. That's an awesome pair right there. So if you guys want to check into that, please do so. So stay safe, everyone, and I hope to see you guys all in the near future. Maybe we'll do some different pellet testing. So stay safe, and bye for now.